I haven't done any dedicated aim training for years now, let alone try to push high scores. The time I spend in Kovacs is usually for testing new settings or gear. Aim training is still extremely useful and I credit it for where my aim is today. I personally just don't have a good enough reason to grind against diminishing returns when I'm not trying to play professionally. This situation presented an interesting opportunity. Could I optimize my approach enough to beat my one wall six targets TE high score of 215 in just one day? And anyone that aim trains can attest to how much better you score when you regularly play a scenario. This was a tough ask, so for this to work, I needed to be smart about how I tackled this. I wanted to use these same settings for the whole day so I could better gauge my progress, even if they weren't perfect for the scenario. I went with my Overwatch 2 settings, which I haven't used for a long time, of 1200 DPI, 2.55 in-game, and 103 field of view. I decided on a 10 minutes on, 3 minutes off approach. The idea being that by the end of a 10 minute straight session, some muscle fatigue would be setting in and I'd be struggling to stay focused. In the 3 minute break, the main priority was to walk around, shake out my arms and hands and generally get my blood flowing. This would give me a break physically while also giving myself time to consolidate my progress. Have you ever played a game where you just couldn't beat a certain level of boss, then after a break or the next day you one shot it? This is basically the same principle, just on a smaller scale. I got started almost immediately after waking up, so I can tell you right now that my hands did not want to listen to me. In the first few 10 minute blocks, I was playing slowly and deliberately, focusing on accuracy over speed. The very first run scored a measly 140. While I wasn't going for a high score yet, it was a sobering moment, seeing just how far I had to climb. In the first few breaks, I prioritized blood flow and waking my body up as I still felt like a zombie. This meant doing some pull-ups, but staying far away from failure, the last thing I wanted was to fatigue my grip. I also did some slow shuttle runs to get the heart rate up a little without getting out of breath and sweating. It may seem a bit ridiculous going through all this effort, but my goal was ambitious and normal gameplay alone wasn't going to get me over the line. By the end of the second block, I managed a 196, which was 10 better than the previous block's 186. I could tell I was starting to get warmed up and my hands felt more responsive. While the peak of block 3 was only one higher at 197, the average was much better and we were trending upwards. By the end of block 4, I was already up to 203 and 202, which I was stoked about. The trajectory was looking really nice. By this point, the brakes were just walking around, drinking water, and washing my hands if I felt they were getting too clammy. All wasn't well though. I was kicking myself about choosing my old Overwatch settings. I went with them because of the lower field of view, but honestly it felt quite slow compared to my current Apex settings which was jarring. Something exciting happened at the end of block 5. Now that I was feeling warmed up, I was more clued into my mouse grip and made an effort to use my fingers more in the aiming action leading to an instant boost to a 207. I've had comments in the past asking how to use your fingertips for micro adjustments, and while I haven't gotten around to making a video on the topic, I used this break to set up my hand cam to show exactly what was happening. While it's difficult to see, as they're contributing to micro adjustments after all, not the larger aiming movements, when I slow it down, you can notice some flex in the thumb in particular, and if you just look at the mouse, you can notice it sometimes shifts position slightly when it's stopped. These are the fingertips micro adjusting the mouse into the right position. Before long, I had a great run landing a 215.07. Frustratingly, this was 0.05 from beating the high score and being done in only an hour and a half, which would have been incredible. And sadly for me, the next blocks were trending down. This wasn't the only reason, of course, but something that was really getting to me was the terrible liftoff distance of the G303 Shroud Edition I was using. I aim better skating along with my fingertips, which I've covered in another video that I'll link in the description. The problem being, in my better runs, I'd often be pushing this technique further and having my sensor cut out when I'd lift up too high. This was devastating for a run. Not only would I miss the shot, but because my mouse traveled and the crosshair didn't, I'd often need to regrip back to the center or I'd run out of mouse pad space, or just be forced to aim from a poor position. This would totally kill any momentum and it was happening more frequently with every block. I hadn't eaten anything at this point so it seemed like a good time to have a break for some food and get back at it half an hour later. 
I had just enough time to squeeze in one block, which wasn't anything special, before heading out with my partner to watch Super Mario, which was actually a really fun movie by the way. Starting up again a few hours later, it was starting to dawn on me that it might not be happening. I was getting plenty of good runs through with a bunch of 2.12 and 2.14s, but I just couldn't seem to keep it together for a clean run start to finish. Anytime I'd realize I was having a great run, I'd quite literally have thoughts pop into my head like, this could be the high score run, you'll be finished, you can make the video, which would obviously derail my focus and I'd start whiffing like crazy. If that wasn't enough, I'd get these surges of adrenaline, my heart rate would spike and then I'd also throw off the run. By this point in the day, physically I still felt good, I was warmed up, my hand was listening to me, and my aim felt on point. It was more about nailing everything else. A big part of high scoring in scenarios like this comes down to routing. You need to choose the best paths to optimize your scoring and accuracy. Generally, that means avoiding changing directions rapidly. So instead of left, right, left, right, try to, for example, aim right, right, right if you can. Aiming shorter distances at clusters of targets, if there's a cluster of two to three targets, you'd aim for that rather than a lone target in a corner. And having a plan for which target you plan to shoot next. If you're clicking on a target and only then seeking out another one, you're wasting so much time. Having future mouse movements mapped out in your mind makes them far easier to execute quickly and accurately. With my consistently high but not high enough scores, I figured it was just a matter of time before a good enough run slipped through. And that's exactly what finally happened. After so many recent 200 plus scores, I managed a 217.07. The relief was palpable and I was kicking myself for not breaking the high score much earlier in the day with that 215.07. Now you may be wondering what these scores are, and honestly that's the most exciting part and it was totally unplanned. I've been working on my very own mouse mod. I can't share the details just yet and I know the term has lost its meaning these days, but it's a game changer. With the 217 locked in, I was done, and on a whim before closing everything down, I plugged in an XM1R with my prototype mouse mod. Huge thanks goes out to Engineer, who generously sent me this mouse along with many other mice and mouse pads to help me create more content for this channel. I've been using the G303 Strat Edition for over a year now, simply because I aim best with it. I have an XM1, and while I like many of the features like the low mouse 1 and 2 position, I never aimed well on it. Yet, in my very first run, I got a 215. You know, I thought, okay, that went strangely well, and went again. This time, I finished with a 223, a full 6 points higher than the 217 I worked all day on. I couldn't quite believe how good it felt to aim, despite just plugging and playing. While it was tempting to grind further, I was exhausted and decided to end the challenge on a high note. This wasn't meant to be the conclusion or even the point of this video, but it was too exciting not to share. I'm sorry I can't provide more details about the mod just yet, I'm only one person and while unlikely, I don't like the idea of a more established company beating me to the punch. Rest assured I am working on this project every day. If you want to be the first to know more about it, I made a Google form where you can enter your email as an expression of interest that I'll link below. While it's really there just to keep you informed, it may help me gauge production volume too if you're interested. If you would like to learn more about the fingertip skating I mentioned earlier, be sure to check out this video here. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.